Hello and welcome to Frankly Speaking with Jala Shotobo. My guest today is an experienced economist and research analyst. He was part of the team that organized the 2014 Nigerian Economic Summit and currently works with Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Welcome to by the Thank you. Thank you, John. So, going straight to the point, what's going on with the Naira? I mean, it's like 400 Naira to the dollar now, or thereabout. <laughs> well, it depends on which rate you're looking at, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm, not, I'm not talking about the bank. So, 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 so I'm let's talking start. about how we buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start there because what the statement you just made, how we buy it, is very mm -hmm. fascinating because it then tells you a lot as to the arguments between you know uh, the pro the um, those who support devaluation and those who are against it, you know. So the idea behind this is that um, people say, if we devalue, right, um, the Naira is going to lose its value. But clearly, right, if you're going to the market, okay, I'm just going to give an example because I think you know, right. anecdotes work uh, for, for individuals, for people to understand. So I go to the market, right, Balogo market, and I'm buying the same thing I bought a month ago. But they're telling me, oh no, the prices have increased because of dollar. In the prices, we're buying, we're buying, no, the, and they actually had the rates there, like these guys are keeping track of rates. You know, we're buying at three, this was when it was about 300 and something. You know, we're buying at this amount. I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. All right, you know, like makes sense that, of course, Balogo market, which is mm. mostly larger than informal market, right, will be buying at that price. But what was now fascinating is as I was at the market, right, I got um, uh, an, an alert from my bank, uh, the debit alert. I just bought something off the internet, right. Uh, it was this cool application thing mm -hmm. and it was fascinating right because when I saw the amount I was charged it was at the same rate that the market. Balogu market is talking about right wow. so so you got a formal sector right um, which is which are banks right talking about uh, charging you at you know parallel market. rates black market rates and then you got Balogu going apart so you don't ask yourself then who is getting at you know official rates so it just tells you that the true value it's of the, of the na, exactly related. exactly so so the naira is not i mean you're not gonna very few people maybe dangote yeah <laughs> they're going, going, going to get exactly to him, exactly which doesn't make any sense get, he can afford to buy a black market rate i mean yeah, yes. he should be buying a black market yes rate. but uh, apparently dangote <laughs> is the savior of nigeria so what can we do so yeah so um that's i think that's that's really that really gets to the core or at least the, the heart of it but but that's not the the question of devaluation don't devalue devalue that doesn't really get to the real point of why we are where we are and what the situation is. The Naira is where it is simply because, you know, there's simply because of the, it is an import export imbalance. Mm. So now people are always people are shouting we import a lot, we import a lot. Actually, the truth is we we do, but compared to other countries, we actually don't. The the difference between us and other countries, as such like the states, right, is that they export a lot too. So, so you've got balance. exactly. So Let you've me stop got. You right there. Um, if I'm invested, he want, he's going to make the, the Naira 200, yeah. 200, um, 200 to the dollar within a yeah. month. So, I mean, it's curious, but I mean, he, this was the guy who like saved us from that terrible false scarcity. So, we want to take him seriously. How do you think he proposes to do that? There's, there's, there's no way. There's no way. Okay, he doesn't, no way. That he doesn't control. Really control. <laughs> except, except he plans on flooding the market with a trillion dollars and more. Uh -huh. constantly except he has way more dollars than the cbn hat does uh -huh. then then he could i mean just this is also theoretically speaking if he has that much money mm -hmm. which would then call the SEC <laughs> yeah. for him <laughs> you know that's the only way you can possibly get mm -hmm. the, the naira then and then it's not sustained said, yeah. then he also said that uh he's going to he threatened to name those behind the forex crisis who are those benefiting from this crisis who, who are those that have the most to gain. The, the, well, any, well, anyone who's round tripping, anyone who has access to um, uh, to dollars at you know the official rate, and then also, of course, and everyone has access to the parallel market rate. But anyone who has access to dollars at the official rate benefits. Because you know, it, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that they're, they're all round tripping, right? It doesn't at all because some people are actually using it legitimately, right? Mm -hmm. But it just means that, like, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, the temptation is huge because mm -hmm. there's a margin. I mean, the, the, there's a there's a huge margin, you know, mm -hmm. between those two prices. The I just buy and, and sell. Exactly. So I you mean, buy and sell, and you will make a neat profit over anything that you'd have done in a year. Tax free. Yes. Wow. Yes, tax free. 
<laughs> fast money, really. So let's go back to devaluation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you wrote recently, you wrote an article recently on devaluation and how it's one of many steps needed to fix Nigeria's yes. economy. Can you explain like devaluation as the first step and then all the other steps needed? Yes. So now, what what the country is going through, right, is because we can't we can't export. We we don't we, we can't export because why? Because we have. Uh, we have limitations. I mean, we have infrastructural and institutional limitations. And right now, that's actually what's keeping us from, of course, any dollars, right? So what then happens, right, is the question we should then be asking is, how then do we start going towards a path of any dollars? But now that's just one angle to it, because when, I, when you think about eco- economics, right, it's never just a one-to-one thing that goes on where there's, yeah, there's a problem, yes, the answer. There's so many uh, aspects of it that people have to look at, you know, and then there's also a lot of opportunity costs, the factors that you, you put in there. So, so part of it is that with devaluation, right, people are afraid, the, the major fear of devaluation is what? Price increase, that mm-hmm. it is going to be inflation and all of that, right? But when you think about the fact that the market is already running on, as I, as I, as yeah. I showed, as I told you in my mm-hmm. story, Just market is already running on, on, you know, a higher, uh, on, on higher um, prices already because mm-hmm. everyone's adjusting. Mm-hmm. No one's getting that everybody, official, so everyone's everybody. adjusting. I mean, so, so the market exactly even pure water. <laughs> I heard that pure water is adjusting. Too now, so. <laughs> so it does tell. It tells you. It tells you that. It tells you that that that, that those fears right are, are a bit unfounded because already. I mean, of course, devaluation will always cause inflation. That's that's standard economics, right? But when you think about the fact that we devalued last year, right, and our inflation rate is still at what nine point six. Right, we didn't. I mean, people were expecting that we would be double digits by now. I mean, everyone. So, was. what's the essence of the uh, evaluation, really? What it just does, right, is that it allows government to then focus on what's important. Because, because what happens, you will have to get a bit technical. I don't want to do that because <laughs> you, you, you've got what you call the trilemma. You know, you have to choose between interest rates and the rest of them. Interest rates, capital control, and uh, flexible or uh, inflexible um, system. But okay. what what just happened? And there's no right? way to say this in layman's terms. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they might require a graph. But 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 what I think the the easy way to put it is that the government is too fixated on the on the value of naira as a thing, you know. But that's not the end goal. The end goal is productivity, and I'll explain to you why economic productivity is the end goal. Because economic productivity, what happens is even if prices even if prices rise, right? Let's just say now the prices of all the things here trying to purchase rises. But let's just say that there's economic growth. Right. People are buying more of your products, you know, you guys are selling, you know, people are coming in for ads, all of that thing, right? What happens? Well, your way you have actually, you know, a higher level of wage. Mm-hmm. You know, because you you you're richer. So by because you're richer, right, you it then matches up with inflation. Do you get what I mean? So 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 actually when you think about it, right, inflation, people see inflation as some this evil bad thing right, that happens. Mm-hmm. But in a healthy economy, right, as economic growth is increasing, right, this I mean inflation also does increase because the now you have a lot of goods, you have a lot of productivity that's going on, a lot of production that's taking place. Mm-hmm. So that 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 does have a one-on-one effect. But what, what needs to happen, right, is for them to then focus on growth. And so far, we don't see that. Okay, so for example, right, if you're in an economy that <laughs> Has been having, uh, I mean, that went from let's say average of five percent as of 2014, right, to uh, about two point what two point eight four now. Uh, you would think that we, the first thing we'll do, right, is have budget be a priority. And we didn't see that for a while. I mean, we didn't see the ministers installed for a while, mm-hmm. and because we didn't see the ministers installed for a while, we didn't get the budget passed for a while. And then even when it was done, when, when it was done, it was yet. yeah, it wasn't yeah, it wasn't it's it's actually not passed, just 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 you know presented. And then like even when it came out, it was rushed. And of course, clearly yeah. we can now see like there's, everyone there's is, now a budget so mafia. exactly there is a budget mafia, <laughs> there is padding, there is that going on. And we went from the promise of a zero budget, right? Because that's what they promised us during the summit, a, a zero budget, right? You know to to having this padded but what do you think about this uh, padded budget because i actually think it was a deliberate attempt to humiliate uh Bari. because i mean really hmm. it's two different budgets presented how yeah, did it change uh, the, the way and, and, and funny, then were, funny. it was really ridiculous errors like yeah. really ridiculous things and then every minister was coming to say oh i didn't present that yeah so I, yeah I yeah but but but, but you, you know you know what i and this is what i said about the last administration and this one right it, it, the buck falls on your table. If you create systems that work effectively, right, there will be no reason for people to have multiple budgets and I said this, I said that. It is a system in place, ensure that all the MDAs are, are you know, uh, 
that are audited ensure that this is exactly what they need and that they gets passed across to the ministries and then that gets passed across to the uh, national planning commission and budget office and then that also gets then then gets reviewed right and then also probably even open sourced so that people like budgets can then look into it and say you know what hmm, mm -hmm. this amount doesn't add up that's a duplication here this and that's right and then before that then gets pushed off mm -hmm. right and then all of a sudden you have a more concerted effort at yeah you know at a budget you know that comes out right and that people don't say oh no i didn't add that part mm -hmm. but once, once you know once you're saying that you didn't have to ask yourself that then tells the level of incompetency that goes yeah. on within and the I system there's no, you know, there's no unity exactly there's there's no unity everybody's just everybody you know and, and that is the story everybody is scattered because what you we don't have that one plan Ooh, that one plan. goal right and then because you don't have that one strong team right that can ensure that you know everyone understands that that's what's mm -hmm. going on and so so what you end up having is a bunch of people who have their own self-interest mm -hmm. speaking of uh, president buhari what do you think about his um, economic policies if he even has any and i mean what policies do you think he should adopt to help nigeria's economy because right now it looks like nothing is happening because he's not saying anything but i mean what do you think do you think he's doing things right and what do you think he can improve upon to actually help the economy? I mean, I wouldn't say he doesn't have an economic policy. I, I'd say that I'd say, and I wouldn't say that he's not saying yeah, in, because enough. It's not he, he, he he does say a lot of things just just outside of Nigeria, <laughs> you know. And, and this I keep coming back to systems. I wrote an article on this on systems, right? Buhari and traffic lights with systems. If you don't create those systems in place, they don't function effectively. And Buhari is, is sort of running on a one man, <laughs> you know, crew. And okay, you've got uh, Ministry of Finance. You've got uh, you've got uh, Ministry of uh, Trade and Investment. You've got all, you've got all of those right, and you've got I think fairly competent individuals that are heading this right. But when you don't have that synchronicity right between these ministries and between the president, there's an issue. And then second of all is also that you, you notice in a lot of his statements is he has a stance. You know, it's a bit uh, is a, is a bit of a. Is a, is a pro is a pro people person right but the, the the problem with that is you can't focus on idealism right idealism does not it's not how uh, it's not how uh, eco an economy is run you know instead focusing on structured and set principles right of economics on how to work things right is how it works nigeria is not people assume that nigeria is the same as any other uh, is, is different from any other country but we run across the same principles that's the truth like you know demand and supply works across everywhere it doesn't change it's not different so so i think he needs to understand that and he needs to understand how market forces take place and i think he also needs to be more supportive of the private sector i don't think that's mm -hmm. going on right now the private sector is a bit alienated you know and that's an issue because you need the private sector right now more than ever. The government does not have money, right? Or at least it doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. So how else are you then going to? How else are you going to funnel the infrastructure that is needed? How mm -hmm. else are you going to do that? So so you you've got the issue of first of all funding for government. You have the issue of capacity for government because government mm -hmm. in itself lacks capacity, and that's mm -hmm. the truth. And what you've seen times and times again that when you have private sector involved, right, in a sector, it actually grows. You know, if it fixes things, I mean, think about uh, telecoms, for example. If we still had NITEL going on, where would we be? Mm. But all of a sudden, right, we privatize the sector and then we see changes that happen. And growth. Yeah, yeah. and growth. And that's how it works, you know. So, but, so you need, I think it's important that he needs to understand mm. that idealism is completely different from, you know, from, <laughs> from economic mm. structure and he needs to fix that. So, um, Nobel Laureate uh, Inka said, I mean, Buhari should convene a... Yeah. And an economic uh, conference. Yeah, I actually feel that Nigerians talk a little too much, and that's probably what they're going to do there. But what do you think? Yeah, do you I, think I mean, like we can actually I, I mean, <laughs> solve our problems? It, 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 that, that, you know, that was actually fascinating for me, given that we are, we actually hold the biggest economic you know summit. Mm -hmm. So that's literally what we do an economic conference in October at the NESG. You know, so so it's all it's, it's also fascinating when you know when uh, Shoinka comes out to say that you know because he thinks you know what we need to figure out what's going on in this country. There's several things to this. First of all, right, I am just shocked that we are thinking of doing this this late, or that mm -hmm. we are thinking of what should we do this late. And it's, it's already late, it's already late like just right? It's already late for us to be thinking of. I mean, we should have had an, a, a plan by now from the government. They had enough time. So for them to say, you know what, yes, let's do this. As I said, right, last year, October, 
you know, we had our summit, right? And then we called them together, government, you know, private sector and government. And, you know, private sector came together and said, you know what, these are the policies we need in place across sectors. We, we, we cut it down across sectors. These are policies that we need to be put in place. And we, we, we put things down to specific KPIs, that's key performance indexes. You know what, this needs to be changed, yeah, this needs to be improved, this needs to be worked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, just for the audience, so in case anyone does it. So, so we had all of this, right, you had this document in the Green Book and then that, that gets sent out. So, so whatever we're going to talk about is not new. We everyone knows Nigeria's issues, right? Every mm -hmm. if you call the average guy on the street, he will tell you how to solve Nigeria's problem, right? So so we already but we already had the summit, mm. you know, and we already had those issues tabled out. You know, and then the NGOs we have been trying to work with, you know, the ministries. Mm -hmm. All the ministries, you know, so we uh, National Planning Commission is our public partner uh, side of the uh, of the NESG. So we've been trying to work with them. So so right now saying, you know what, let's call a let's call so what's gonna happen? We're going to call one again. And then we're, then we're going to talk. Hire people. Then we're going to do And then they'll hire all these all the same people they had for the national yeah. conference. Well then then there you and go. Then, so so you know so then, so what exactly is the, the question is what's the deliverable? You know, what is the, the deliverable? The if if by now right the ministers that you have, you know, the economic advisors that you have, all of them cannot come together right within in-house right mm -hmm. and give you like a coherent cohesive plan then i don't think a, a national summit at this at this point is going to do that you know it, it national summit will, i mean you should just then you, you you might as well just wait till october <laughs> when we have a national summit and then just clean that and then just you know, and right. then just actually contribute to it because he wasn't even around oh, he actually wasn't yeah, around in the next one because he said he pushed economic policy making and the rest of them to uh Osibanjo. you um. know he, he said that right you know but right now he's kind of been the one out there talking now we've not really seen Osi Banjo like kind of take that position as mm -hmm. you know as the as the head as of the, the economy, yeah, the head of the economy yeah. um so many people have been calling people have been calling for the resignation of the central bank governor i mean everybody's blaming him because obviously you have to blame somebody <laughs> do you think i mean is any of this his fault <laughs> And do you think he should resign? Well, well, the economic downturn is certainly not his fault. I mean, it were, it were just suffering from, you know, what a lot of other oil producing countries are suffering from. So that's not his fault. I mean, what hap what's happened to Naira is certainly not his fault. Uh, the level of uncertainty within the Forex market and uh, within, so a bit of within the economy, right? That's, I don't want to come out and say it is his fault, <laughs> okay. but I think that they could have, they could, have set up better policies, right, that would ensure a level of certainty in the market. Markets need certainty. When you have uncertainty in the market, people are no, you're not going to have investors. You're not, no one is going to make any move because people are waiting to see what happens next. You know, so an example of that is what's going on right now. No company is going to come in, right, and say, I want to make an investment. For companies, now let me break it down. For mm -hmm. companies to come into Nigeria to make an investment, right, so they're coming with dollars. But in order for you to spend that dollar in Nigeria, you have to convert it to Naira, right? Mm -hmm. But you cannot imagine that given that our official rate is 200, companies are now going <laughs> to take that dollar, right? And exchange it, what, for official rate, which is, what, 200? Oh, wow. Of course, then, no one, they're going to say, you know, why should I do that? Because maybe next month, you guys might devalue and I'm going to get burnt. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I'd waited a month, I'd literally be getting at 300 so that I could then, uh, I'll get way more money. Mm -hmm. So, it's simply that. So, when you have that, when you have that uncertainty, you look at last week, that, what happened last week. Dollar, I mean, Naira was at 400 and next thing, you know, it was crashing down. That, you know, so people were celebrating that, but I'm saying to myself, no, like, the market should not be working that way. No, but what happened? Why did it suddenly crash? For people say speculators, you know, there are different reasons for that. Probably like a, a, yeah, a central Uba, central Uba bank. Said it was him. No, no, it wasn't. It, that he's just <laughs> he's just being silly. You know, so it's a central bank. So, you know, so maybe central bank intervention also. You know, so so so. But the the, the point is that there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's done enough of a job, right? To Ali, that you know, level, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, of course, you know, whenever we talk, we're seeing things from results, but we're not mm -hmm. seeing things from action that's taking yeah. place. So, maybe, because you know, maybe extreme. exactly, maybe within his, maybe he's, he's done, maybe he's taken a lot of actions. Mm -hmm. But there's several things that has been that have been said by the CB, and that you know, you just look at it and you say to yourself, This is not this is not sound economic, you know, policy. Mm -hmm. you, you had the CBN uh, monetary uh, uh, policy director say the other day that yes, that the the, the the what was it I say? <laughs> the 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 standard um rate in the market is the official rate and everyone was like i mean i remember no. the company was like no like where did you buy from official 
where have you bought from? No one has bought mm-hmm. from official. Like, in, in, even in, in banks, they don't yes, sell even you in ba- Yes, yes. I mean, I'm now into a bank and they told us to go and meet a, a bureau to change guy. Exactly. There you go. You see. You know? So, and so they're pushing you. So it tells you if they're pushing you to the if they're pushing you to be this, you know, the, then it tells you that that's then uh, the parallel rate is what is what most of the country is mm-hmm. then running at. Oh, yeah. You know. So the Which question is then no why are you then keeping why are you then why are you then keeping this margin right only for people like Dangote to then benefit from mm. you know and then i was reading an article by Faye and by Faye uh, on, on twitter and then he's talking about how you know Dangote is getting rates right to go and build factories in other african countries which is fascinating right because then you're not they're not that's not nigeria mm-hmm. you know you're giving in rates for other countries which doesn't help it doesn't, really you know, it doesn't really i mean it doesn't uh, in terms of job creation in terms of value added to nigeria i don't see how that really adds up mm. so so i think i think there's just i think you could have handled things better i think it was given it was given he came in at a very difficult point in time but i think you know it, it, it's fascinating how his opinions have changed over time this is not me accusing him of <laughs> of, uh, of, uh, of being of being influenced of, of being influenced by Buhari. This is not me because Buhari came out several times and he has said, "I will not devalue." First of all, it's not even his mandate to do that. He's he's not in charge of monetary policy. You know, government of course, CBN is supposed to be independent from government. You know, that's not true. Yeah. Of course, that's that's not realistic. That's not true. But it should have that semblance of being, you know, mm-hmm. separate. So it's fascinating, right? That the same individual, right? Um, uh, that mm-hmm. devalued. When was that? Uh, is it 2014? No, 2015. last year. Last year, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Really 2015. The same, the same individual who devalued and who gave reasons for devaluing as you know what? There's a lot of pressure on, you know, on the mm-hmm. naira. So we have to devalue in order for us to, you know, in order for us to hold on to whatever uh, reserves that we have left. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, right? Fast forward a few months afterwards, it's a completely different story. We can't mm-hmm. devalue because we are this, because we are that. And, you know, and so it's fascinating, right? How can you have you you took one action earlier in the year and then mm-hmm. later on is no, this, and then the only the only thing that's changed, right, is who was leading. So oh. now a new person is in, Buhari is in. You follow the mandate of the leader. So I, mm-hmm. I guess that's where we are right now. Okay, so I mean the ultimate Nigerian dream will somehow now everybody's talking about and um, they said Buhari promised that um, during the election campaigns that the Naira will be one naira to the dollar. I don't now, think he said that. <laughs> no, no, they said he said. They it. said he said that. Yeah, yeah. It was that he said. He, I mean, it was a whole. Uh, there was a whole media yeah. outrage thing yeah. on it. So, can that ever happen? And how? Will <laughs> it happen? Can it ever? I don't. I, I don't know. Okay. Let, let, well. <laughs> Theoretically, it's possible, right? Okay. If theoretically, what happens? theoretically, it's possible if the value of the dollar falls against the value of the naira. Okay. So basically, if Not we let, 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 let's just say we start, let's just say we start uh, exporting so much to the to the states and other countries, right? And all of a sudden, our naira is in so much demand. You know, people just people can't get enough of people can't get enough of our money because they have to get our money to buy our goods. You know, it's all of a sudden, right? People are giving us dollars. All of a sudden, our money rises back up to the dollar. But, but, but I think the bigger question is for to people to ask is, why is that so? Like, why is it? You know, why? Why is it so? Why are people caught up on this one? You know, to one <laughs> ratio to the, the naira to the dollar? Because would be cheap. I mean, I buy twenty. It, would it be because no, no? Because what that then? What that then tells us is that we're not serious about them producing our own things if oh, we're only we're waiting for th- if we're, exactly oh. if we're waiting for things to be cheap in the sense that we're oh, still going to yeah. buy from outside then we're not fo- then then you know then we're not yeah. really into the buy niger as we claim to be mm. if we really were right we'll be looking for things because right now if we actually devalue this is this is the standard this is standard economics if we actually devalue right, exports would be cheaper because now your naira is so much cheaper so people can now buy more of your goods because your goods have become cheaper right if we divide that would that's actually what would then help exports you know but the reason why we're so bent on this right is because we say we we actually we're don't export yeah no no first of all it's because we we don't most of the majority of what we export is oil you know so and and that's 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 not going to have an effect on that because mm. prices are low so it doesn't really matter anyway but what then happens is what about other possible goods that we could be exporting Sporting. so the, the so really to the next step exactly the so the next step right is for us to actually have an export oriented point of view or perspective on things right and say you know what how then can we 
improve our environment, how think we improve uh, the business environment enough, mm -hmm. right, that we have infrastructural upgrades, institutional upgrades, right, mm -hmm. and then we are certain that we've in reduced cost of uh, inputs, right, the cost of operations, the cost of doing business, right, so that enough that people can then produce right produce for the international market because when mm -hmm. you produce for the international market you have to meet up to a certain standard in order mm -hmm. for you to be competitive and when that then happens right people are selling to outside they're selling to the outside market what then happens we're getting dollars we don't have an issue anymore so so if you're getting dollars right it doesn't matter that you're spending dollars do you get what i mean like yeah. if it, it's it's simple it's that simple mm -hmm. you know if if we are getting if we're getting dollars that we need spending the spending dollars is not going to be a, a problem mm -hmm. You know, because, because you the company is running on his own. We buy Niger to that hashtag. Buy, buy Niger to Yeah, no, I've got no little flack on that So, one. I mean, CNN even ran a story on it that, oh, can the hashtag help the Niger? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was on Al Jazeera also, and that was very interesting. So, <laughs> that was actually I mean, what do you think? Can it have any impact? Can oh, what? No, no. No, <laughs> no. It, it can't. It can't. It, it's a good, I mean, it's, and this is what I said, right? It's, it's not a bad you know, uh, it's not a bad, what do you want to call it, movement, mm -hmm. right? In the sense that if it was aimed at what I call inf uh, curing information asymmetry. So information asymmetry is people don't really know, uh, by, between buyers and sellers, they, they're not aware of what the prices are and what the quality of goods are. Mm -hmm. So now, if that, if it simply was, you know what, now let's publicize Nigerian goods. Before, if I was going to buy uh, something, uh, shoes from America, right? And then you told me, oh, no, but this is Nigerian one that is, you know, equally as good. It's going to last the same way and it's probably around the same price. You should probably check it out. Oh, wow, I don't know about that. Let me buy that now. You know what? So I've just supported someone within the Nigerian economy, mm -hmm. which of course is good because now that person has more disposable income in their hands and then mm -hmm. can spend it. And that's what grows on the economy, right? So, so that's how, that's, that's where they, they're coming from with it, right? Which of course I agree with. Like, yes, you know, if we had... If we had um, better awareness of other goods, of Nigerian goods rights that were good, that are quality, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But for you to say that that's what's going to grow the Naira rights, it's unrealistic. It's unrealistic because we don't, we are not able, we don't have the ability to scale that. Mm -hmm. Because and second of all, right, which I pointed out, because it it leads to interestingly, you know, you know, in Nigeria you have to always start from expecting the worst because that's <laughs> you know this is true that it sounds mm -hmm. pessimistic, but that's the think about almost anything that has happened any policy that's taking place any action that we've done we came in Bwari came in right and we came in thinking the best oh my god things are going to change we're going to have this this, this. i mean it was going to be on fire and for months he was just doing nothing no, it's still on fire now <laughs> for months he was, was just doing nothing I and mean, he's traveling everywhere but for months he was just doing nothing you know then you had you know budget oh wow we're going to have a zero budget everything and then look at what came out so you, you do see the mm -hmm. difference between expectations and reality mm -hmm. they're different so it's in the same instance with this buy Niger thing. It's the difference between expectations, right? And reality will be very different because what what, hap what happens, right? And what we've pointed out, right, is that people then use that as a way to engage in you know monop in monopolistic tendencies. What happens is tomorrow someone will say, ah, don't fly any other thing. Fly only Arik. Oh, no. Buy Niger, I'm, right? I'm not but buying do you, exactly. Do you know what then? The, the question is, what then happens, right? You are limiting choices, right? And then giving it to one probably person. just one person who has no incentive now to actually innovate or, or be competitive in or invest in because in exactly you know so he's putting in his pocket yeah so so they, they're simply just going to uh, you know think don't think you know that and that's what the one thing i heard from meeting house and you know that americans created their laws right to think about the worst things people could do right and then work from there we think about people being good and then work from yeah. there, which is which yeah, is not so smart. Think the worst case scenario, exactly. So you so you go from thing. no, which is the, it's really the best because mm -hmm. you go from there, then you should guard against those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So what then ends up happening right now is that I mean, think about I don't want to call them out, but you know, think about the cement industry. Ask yourself why Nigeria has one of the most expensive cements in the world. <laughs> no, ask yourself that question. Mm -hmm. Why do we have the most? I mean cement in the world and why does the largest producer of cement in nigeria right i'm not going to call names <laughs> but why, why do they have like almost a 50 percent margin on profit i mean across the world right cement does not make that much margin you know maybe 12 percent 15 mm. you know but a 50 almost more than 50 percent and every single year upon year like revenues are rising so you have to not ask yourself but yet you see so much of completed buildings everywhere why do you think that is 
too expensive. Exactly, it's expensive. So then ask you if people, and then how many other cements do you know? That's how it's exactly. If I, I ask you to name two other ones, I know one. Portland cement, but mm -hmm. it's, it's fading out. Exactly. So, 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 so you see what then ha ends up happening is that that's the end result of this sort of mm -hmm. policies. So one right? person just because has people, everything. Exactly, one person has everything. Tomorrow, right, everyone is shouting, yes, yeah, innocent, innocent. And I'm happy for innocent. I'm glad that they're, they're doing, you know, that they're, I don't know if it's assembling or constructing cars in Nigeria, right, which is good. You know, but what ends up happening is tomorrow, right, we'll say, you know what, let's ban all the other cars. Why are we even importing cars? Let's, everyone should just no, buy that's innocent. Not going to happen. Everyone should just buy innocent. <laughs> exactly. First of all, I've, aside the fact that like Senate, your Senate, your Senate uh, yeah, just bought Gina just bought like new Mercedes and new cars, so that's not going to definitely going to happen. But but it's a possible scenario where like people will then find ways right to m make lawmakers mm -hmm. right uh, push policies or laws that benefit their business at the expense of every other person, at the expense of competition. Mm -hmm. So so that that's all I'm saying, right? That let's not just look at oh, the rosy side happened. of this. Mm. So, so, so my solution to that was my part two article, which said, focus then on exports, because once you change just your focus a bit to be more ambitious, you change the incentive that drives it. Mm. So all of a sudden, right, these people, these uh, industries that are supporting now actually have to be competitive if they are to, you know, if they are to survive in the international market. International market does not care for your patriotism, doesn't care for any of this. Mm. It cares for quality and prices. The real reason why China is where it is now is because within a given level of quality, they can give you a good price. Mm. And it took them, you know, it took them, it took them a bit to get there. Mm. You know, they, they, the government had to invest in a lot of things to get there. It has to invest in infrastructure, it has to invest in uh, finances, all of those things for you to get there. So if you don't have those things in place, right? What ends up happening is that people will just say, you know what, well, I'm saying to my fellow people, why should I really, and they're going to buy anyways. There's nothing mm -hmm. for me to so do. So why should I care about quality? Exactly, but once you're selling to people that care about quality, right, you keep that standard. And that actually, that's where economic growth takes place. And that also, of course, as coming back to our original topic in the Naira, mm -hmm. that of course then strengthens Helps. the Naira. Naira. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chola. Thank you for watching today's episode of Frankly Speaking with Chola Shotubo. Join me again next time for another enlightening edition where I ask all the questions you want answers to. Until then, ciao.